Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to talk about a different stock besides GME. Please do not hate us. It is Zim. I have talked about it a lot in the past. I've traded it. It is definitely, I've made the most money out of this stock out of any other. And I'm hopping back in today. Well, Monday, I already hopped back in Monday, March 7th. I bought a day of earnings Wednesday and I am a before GME, I was a deep value investor. Justin used to call me a boomer as this is a shipping company that just produces cash for a living. They uh, were trading at about like a one PE ratio. And, with, and I just, I bought a ridiculous amount and it worked out very well. I've put them all in GME, but I am opening, I opened a new position today as they have, they have earnings Wednesday and I think they'll probably blow the rocks off. So how am I playing this? I just call options. I mean, I want the max leverage for littlest cost because I think if they blow earnings, there's a decent chance of a run. And that is what I plan to capture. The main risks though are but the market has been tanking and I would not be surprised if the market tanks the next week and a half, two weeks, then my position will also tank because I think it will probably uh, trade similar to the market if it's tanking, even though it's held relatively strong during these tough times. Okay, so another thing that an another risk is they they flunk earnings. I do not think this is going to happen if they locked in extremely high rates at all time highs and they've been blowing out earnings every other time. I believe they will do so again. I could be wrong, which I probably am, as I am just a little Rubleton. So that is the main risk. I think if we do see a run, I think that stock's trading at 69, 68, 70 right now. Yeah, if we see a blow, I mean with the way that we're, if we see a run up in the stock market and Zim performs well, then I think we could see a run to, I don't know, 75, 80, like a decent, decent run. I think we could see a 10, $20 run if they really blow out earnings, which I think they will, is they're still trading at like a one, one and a half, two, three PE, PE ratio, depending on what happens with earning. They have like a, a, a 20% dividend yield. They just produce cash. And that's what I love. So I would not be surprised if we see a, just a pile of cash and they maybe increase their dividend, do some share buybacks, something along yes. the sorts. That is what I'm thinking of now. And what will I do if this works in my favor? Well, I am a GME or now, so I would probably put those profits into some super far dated GME calls, maybe buy a few shares as I have a pretty decent position size on right now. If the trade doesn't work within two weeks, I'm going to close the position and just take my loss or whatever we have. That is what I am doing. Justin, I do not think he has a position on as I'm not sure he's having some technical difficulties right now. So I'm having to take over. So uh, let's talk about the market as a whole and why I think it could be a good setup, especially if Zim blows out earnings, because I think we will see a probably a decent rally in the next week. Why is this? Because there was a great article from Kevin Meir at the Macro Tourist. Highly recommend his newsletter. It is paid, but it is worth it. So he did a backtrust of the biggest uh, rallies in the stock market and virtually all of them were in the midst of bear markets. So yeah, we see the, the biggest rallies in these bear markets. And this is just because of the way dealers are positioned and kind of what happens. We see these sharp moves down in the market and then a snap pullback. And I think that the way that dealers are positioned right now, we could be bound for one of these snap pullbacks in the market, maybe a few hundred points over the next two weeks, a thousand. I don't know. Who knows? I do think that we will see a decent rally at some point. And I would bet on it being within the next two weeks, just because of the way these dealers are positioned. I'm not sure there if uh, political tensions continue to escalate, the market could tank, which would crush my position. If the market starts to go up and Zim really knocks earnings off, then we could see a, a massive rally, which would be best case for the position. So I would say this is a calculated asymmetric risk to reward trade. This is not financial advice, nor would I take it as, nor should you take it as any. Justin, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So you pretty much hit the nail on the head from my perspective. It's the geopolitical risk. I don't know how to like calculate it. I know it's there, but I, I don't know what to do with it. I mean, on one hand, you can say, well, it's always there. What are you supposed to do? Hide under your bed and do nothing? Well, no, that seems stupid. But at the same time, I don't know like how it actually you know change action. I guess from my perspective, the way I've approached it is I like precious metals, but I'm much less a market guy. Like I, I do not like having to jump into a trade and jumping out of a trade. Like that's very, very foreign for me. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying I'm purely set it and forget it, but generally I I, I like to go into something and then stay in it. For you know, for a long period of time, like you know, like a year plus. 
so anyways um I, I that's probably the only real insight uh, I, I can offer on that front um I do think macro and the market is downstream of the geopolitical situation. And as long as the geopolitical situation remains unstable, there's this tail risk that I don't know how to factor in. So yeah, and it's, it's absolutely a risk. I would say it is the biggest risk. There could absolutely something happen in the market tank that would take my position down with it. But I understand that I, if nothing happens, the way dealers are positioned, I do think there will be a run-up if LL stays equal. And I think Zim will blow out earnings, probably perform pretty well under these circumstances. If they don't blow out earnings, then I guess I am wrong and I will take my L. But I am, this is just what I'm doing. You probably shouldn't do it as I am just a Rubleton. Let's talk about GME a little because everyone loves GME. Well, so the big GME news today was that Cohen yeah. picked up that stake in BBY or BBY, oh, yeah. whatever, Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. Bed, Bath and, and Beyond. And we saw, I mean, pre market, it was up 100 over a hundred percent. And this is going to put a lot of pressure as we know the way that they're going short is through these ETF FTD, uh, these ETF creations. So they're buying a, a yeah. pile of stock and going short. I mean, the way PiFi said it, if you go to a mall and throw a rock, you'll they're short it. So <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. And if B, 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 y is running, then that is going to put more pressure on these shorts that are short the whole sector. And, uh, hopefully We'll see when these new uh, cre FTD creations or these new synthetics are created. We'll see what happens. This is, I don't think uh, this is immediate action on Jimmy and we today we saw it absolutely tank, but I actually think that is good news because usually I don't think that we're seeing a 13 or I mean, going from 120 to like 96 uh, for no reason. I think that is probably someone trying to spread some fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I could be wrong, but I still have a really good feeling even when the stock's going down. I was going to buy more today, but instead I put it in Zim as I think I could make a lot more money from that short term. Anything else? Yeah, Justin? The other thing, yeah so the, the two comments I'd say on that front is that as far as Jimmy going down, well, the market was down and see what I said earlier about geopolitical risk, you know, bam. Yeah, moving on. The second thing I'll say is this. When it comes to the various mechanisms, I, I think I quasi understand them, but just only on the surface level. So rather than try to like get into the weeds of saying, well, it's this specific mechanism or whatever. No, 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 no. I think about it like this. There is an exotic set of transactions that are very calculated, very specific, and very intertwined to manage the short position from various actors. Anything that, so you have a complex system by itself. Anything that adds more complexity to the system, I see as being inherently destabilizing to the system. So on one hand, from a very you know high level, Cohen going in, and if he let's say puts an incredible amount of pressure on Bed Bath and Beyond, and that in turn affects you know these these various exotic transactions in ways that become much harder to maintain control of the system and keep the system ongoing, I see that as a net plus because I think one of the major milestones to see the GME saga play out is the short interest has to be accurately reported, which means anything that stands in the way of accurately reporting the short transaction, or no, no, anything that stands in the way of accurately reporting the short interest needs to be removed. And this is where it gets back to this idea of these exotic you know transactions. So I was very pleased to see that. But to your point, Josh, no idea of how long it'll take to play out. No idea of the mechanisms, the, the specific mechanisms in play. I've got a few guesses, but again, they're just that guesses. Yes, I do not think it is a coincidence that they are going after Bed Bath and Beyond, though. Uh, I think Ryan Cohen definitely knows what he is doing, and we shall see how this plays out. So without further ado, we thank you guys for watching. Please do not take this as financial advice as I gave a stock tip. It is not a telling you to buy a stock. So. Thank you for watching.